God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and make a video of a dream I just received that the angel, the angels of the Lord and the Lord Jesus, he commented on the slander in the churches against those who were preaching the word. They noticed what I noticed and I didn't, you know, that there was a person who made a video, guys, and they were basically saying, basically, because you're obeying God, that is you trying to be God. What kind of nonsense is this, guys? That obeying God is trying to be God. Can you imagine if God, for a second, kicked out Lucifer? and Or he kicked out uh, the angels who just because they wanted to obey him. And he said, you're trying to be me. And then Lucifer, who was trying to take the throne and disobey God, he kept him. And he said, oh, you're so good. You're so accepting of of my grace and what I did that you don't have to earn it. In other words, you can do whatever. But but God forbid somebody preaches obedience or trying to be him. This is the idiocracy, guys, of what we're living in. And in the dream, I was walking with the angels and we were uh, on a street and a white car was coming by and it wasn't a little short distance. It wasn't even a big distance at all. But at first I was like, should we cross over or whatever? Maybe we can get hit. But that car was a far away. And then the angels demonstrated. And finally they walked over and grabbed a gray cat from a uh, from a yard that was going to get hit. They grabbed a gray a cat, you know. And basically um, that white was the spirit of deception going to run over that cat. And that gray is a reference to Grisha. They don't know their left hand from their right. They're all about gray knowledge. The church who doesn't know, who thinks we have to serve two masters. And God forbid anybody try to pick up that gray cat and get him, stop him from getting hurt, from getting, uh, you know, that, that car running over him. They're doing a work. So they're trying to be God. And I heard them rebuke this in the dream. They rebuked them for that you know, being spoiled. And I heard the word Esmeralda, and I heard the uh, word, the free man's republic and the free man's party. And Esmeralda actually means emerald, guys. This is a reference to the emerald city of Oz. And because Oz means strength, guys. And the Roman Empire means strength. It's a reference to that. That's why I did not know Esmeralda, you know, I didn't know what it meant until I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's why they said after that the Republican Party. Because, see, guys, uh, the Republic came out of other uh, Roman Empire. They have a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. And basically, it's strong delusion, Oz. They're saying... You know, we're strong in our own way. We can never overcome the lust of the flesh. And also trying to do what they think is right. They're equating it to politics. That the people are fighting against what they perceive as evil Democrats. But they don't perceive the evil in their own party. See, Democrat democracy, guys, that came from the Grecian Empire. The gray. People not knowing their right hand from their left. And the Roman Empire, or, or the Roman Republic, you know. The Republic came from the Romans and, and dipping your sword in blood. And uh, they've killed, crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And they've forbidden a good work to rescue those democratic people. And, of uh, you know, the Grecians, you know, the power to the people. You know, they, they've forbidden that we rescue anybody who doesn't know their right hand from their left. Like that gray cat who was going to get hit in the yard by uh, that. It was going to probably run out into the front of that street and get hit by that white car and to prevent it i picked that up and they were or the angel picked that up and he was equating that when you were preach repentance sean and tell them about holiness and they're slandering you it says in elijah codes and this is why i refer back to this thing because the lord literally telling me in the dream i was elijah you know in in 2021 in january uh I refer to the Elijah Codes because it's his defense to me. Basically, this, this people is so evil. It basically says the slander is like the rebellion of heart. And he rejected the prophesier, which causes shame. You know, and a disaster, which is about the curse of three days of darkness, is about to happen. And Revelation 9 put them into that darkness. It said a disaster is because of his brother. And 
his witnesses are dead. It says the devourer is a Christian priest. They're devouring the people of the Lord. You know, uh, that, that whole Roman Empire is strong in their own sin. And God forbid we try to rescue the gray or the like type of a Democrat. A person doesn't know their right hand from their left. You're siding with these pe people. You know, and he's... He's doing both things because uh, this wasn't supposed to be mainly a political message. But if you try to rescue somebody from their sin, they don't know their right hand from their left. They say we can sin sometimes. Uh, it's like you're a traitor to your own people. And, and this is the wickedness of the churches. The slander of the churches. And I can't remember what I heard, but when I heard, I was like, oh, wow. So God really is against this whole thing when they're trying to say you're trying to be God just because you're uh, doing a work. Because I saw a video a person put out and I didn't say anything and I went to sleep and, and they confronted this. You know, angels aren't happy about this. Jesus is not happy about this, guys. And the church needs to repent because they're, they're acting like little punks and rebels. They act like little punks and rebels that god forbid we tell people about repentance and holiness we're being proud somehow this is the slander of the heart it says their rebellion is like the slander of heart. their slander is like the rebellion of heart so when they slander they say because you're trying to tell people to repent and go and sin no more somehow uh you know you're trying to be god in all this and you're proud you want to take jesus place and all this this is rebellion and this comes from their Esmeralda type spirit, Emerald. They're, they're green in their own greed for the lust of the world. And God forbid we try to uh, save somebody, uh, like t tell somebody, uh, like save that gray cat. It doesn't know its right hand from its uh, left. It's right paw from its left. It's going to run out to the street, get killed by that white car of deception. And all of a sudden, they're, you're trying to be God because see what you're doing, it invades on it. it uh, convicts that person who's like Esmeralda wants those emeralds of Oz they want the green they want the uh, lust you know like green can represent money Jesus said you can't serve two masters you can't serve God and mammon mammon represented it wasn't only for the spirit of money but Jesus told me that spirit of money the riches of your own life you don't want to lose you don't want to let go of your own life you don't want to let go of your sin so in order to keep it you you slander and rebellion comes out of your heart in the form of slander this person's trying to be god they're trying to be this they're trying to be that because you don't want to give up your own life and he said it's from the free man's republic the free man's party and you know that's why that's why i just realized he said that because the fourth uh beast was the roman empire it was described as a flying eagle in as more in uh uh what do you call it in uh the book of esdras and basically saying we can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. We're free. We don't have to obey you. We can do whatever we want. You know, the free man's republic, the free man's party. That came from the Roman Empire. They were described as a, a, a murderous people. They murdered the Lord Jesus on the cross. And, and thus says the Lord Jesus, you've murdered my, my prophets with your slander. You've murdered me through your willful disobedience. And do you, will you dare come into my courts and, and preach to me and my people saying that obedience to me is trying to be me when I have billions of beings up there obeying me. I love that. And will you call disobedience as Lucifer who tried to take the throne something that is humble and humility? And guys, he reminded me also of the story of uh, Abel and Cain. Uh, uh, Cain, you know, he basically offered the inferior fruits of the ground it wasn't any problem him offering the fruits but it said in the book of joshua he offered the inferior fruits of the ground nasty fruit he could have brought good fruit but this other person in, in representing you know they bring you know serving two masters and they say that's okay but cain brought the sacrifice of the lamb meekness humility in other words jesus died for me i have a fear of hell humility meekness like a lamb laying your life down bringing the sacrifice of christ coming as the sacrifice of christ laying your life down as it says you know he laid his life down for us we ought, ought to lay down our life for one another's and jesus said i've done what i've done for an example to you 
you're supposed to pick up your cross and follow me. You know, the same way he picked up his cross and went to Calvary. You're supposed to lay your life down. And, and they're offering him the inferior fruits of the ground. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. You saved me. But they're proud. They're not like a meek lamb who fears the Lord and, and fears his master and lays his life down. Like I saw a, a, a basically a, a video today of a deer, guys. And there was a mother deer and there was, a, it looked like a daughter deer. And the daughter walked up and when it saw the guy in the road, it became afraid and it, and it laid its neck down on the road and he pet it. And I'm not saying, you know, it was, it was so afraid, but that guy's God honors. He honors the humility. And I'm not saying you have to be shaking in your boots all the time, but that's more shows meekness and humility when you fear the Lord and tremble at his word. And that's what he says, you know, I desire obedience, not sacrifice. You know, I, I sacrifice, you know, I gave these fruits. I spent uh, three whatever t hours praying. I went to this uh, community service I'm giving out to the homeless. I'm uh, going to church. Yeah, but you're living like the devil in the closet. And when you hear the word of God preached, you say somebody's trying to be God. And guys, this is the reason why it comes out of their mouth like this. Because they have secret sin, they're harboring in their heart. They don't think they have to get right. They think you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and there's no problem. But guys, uh, there needs to be repentance in the church. There needs to be repentance in the church. Because what kind of what kind of people is this? They say that obeying God is trying to be God. So I, I guess all the angels up there in heaven, they're trying to be God, you know. And, and because, God forbid, we, we do something. We're trying to earn something to get there. The angels of God, if they obey God, they're trying to earn something. And, you know, there, were, there was an angel of the Lord in the Bible that when, uh, I believe it was the story of Samson, but one of the parents asked him his name and he said, why do you ask me my name? And he went up in a flame of fire. If they saw a person like that, why do you ask my name? They would, they would cry, witch, burn them. In other words... You know, he's saying he's God, but that angel was a, a prophet. Why do you ask my name what the Lord would say? You know, why do you ask my name? You should know my name by now. And also, you know, I, I'm not the Lord. Why do you ask my name? And it's a double thing. But so the angels, and I've heard them prophesy. And in the scripture, when they say, uh, you, you know, I command you to do this or that. And it will say later on, that was an angel of the Lord. Well, what was the deal? Why was it speaking like God? Well, it was prophesying, guys. It was trying, the angel wasn't trying to be God. And, but the, the, the people, this modern day, they're rebels, guys. They're just rebels. They hate obedience to the word of God. It must be pride if you're preaching all obedience. It says in the Elijah Codes uh, about, you know, the people. Even among the remnant, it says an idol is with them. An idol is with them. They ha are harboring some secret sin. They have rebellion. They don't want to give up this. Because if they have to uh, totally walk straight and never do that sin again, never pull down their pants and masturbate, then, then what kind of life are they going to have? And they're also afraid that they can't do that. And, and they... Guys, you got to get out of that Roman Republic church, you know. And, and he told me that uh, we have an eagle, the fourth beast, the Roman Empire. One of the wings is, is for the Republican Party, a public uh, thing, you know. Uh, one of those, those things, basically. Um, one of the wings of the eagle. The second wing is the democracy power to the people giving power to the people which came from the kingdom of Grecia letting the people have the say so they can do whatever they want like that gray cat I saw so he wanted to go run out in the street and he was going to get killed by that white car basically get run over by it and God is trying to save these people from that and see and those are the two wings of the lion of Babylon when you see that first kingdom fall the Lion of Babylon, guys. Babylon was based on the Tower of Babel when they wanted to build all the way up to heaven and overthrow God. Kind of like what these people are doing right now. They want to kick God off the throne of their heart. They want to be God. God forbid anybody tells them they, they, need, they need to obey God. 
they're being trying to be God because they have an idol in their heart that they they have on the sitting on the throne of their heart ruling and they're calling it Jesus a Jesus who says you can serve two masters and everything will be okay but the language of Babylon it all came back to God divided their languages because they were speaking nonsense guys they were preaching of serving other gods and they were trying to build up the throne of heaven and be God so he took their language and he turned it divided it into 70 that's where Babel came from so guys we have the the lion of England which is a represent the, the same animal of Babylon and we have it as our English language guys and it basically comes from Babel of other different languages it, and, and, and that's that's why we're the new Babylon guys we have the uh, the language of, of Babylon of the lion you know we have English and we have those two wings of that that eagle which uh, the lion had before it fell you know the freedom to do whatever we want you know Republic basically democracy giving power to the people to do whatever they want the Christians who are fighting the Democrats are doing the same thing. They believe they have power in Jesus to do whatever they want, uh, you know, or maybe they can not do whatever they want, but most of the time follow him. But if they sometimes go off to sin, no, there's no problem with that. Guys, that's uh, that's democracy. That came from the Grecian Empire. Those people also, they didn't want people to get too much power, a leader. And because God forbid he does that, he take away their freedom to sin and do evil. And so they would overthrow things, and that's where we got democracy and republic from the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, uh, Julius Caesar wanted to copy Alexander the Great, be just like him. He created a Roman Republic. So actually, they're two sides of the same coin. So uh, democracy, power to the people. Let me do whatever I want. Let me serve two masters if I want. Republic. And if, if you get in my way and you try to stop me, I'm going to put you to the sword. And this is, guys... Both these parties, uh, this is a reference, basically. The Free Man's Republic is, is, is the Republic, Free Man's Party, and that's Democrat. Uh, power to the people to do whatever. These are the two wings of the eagle. We've been taught all this time, guys, this is different, but they ha that's their good and evil, guys, that they have. And this is why God's saying, come out of the governments of this world and the politics. I find it funny that these same people who do that, they preach utter loyalty to Trump, but they don't want to even do anything for the Lord. They will almost go to the death for Trump, but not for the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's there's idolatry in their hearts, guys. And basically, this whole, this was never a Christian nation, I hate to say it. When they built the uh, White House, they took a White House, guys. And they built it on a pen pentagram structure so that when God could look down on humanity, look down at their government and, and the core of their system, he would see a pentagram, satanic symbols, phalanx at that places, you know, just to blaspheme and so that God one day would uh, have to judge this nation. This is the new Babylon, which Babylon meaning confusion. You, If you want to be a, a boy you and you're a girl, you can be a boy. If you're a girl, if you're a boy, yeah. And if you want to be a dog, you can be a dog one minute. You can be a shrimp if you want to be. You can be anything you want. This is confusion. You can go after other gods, do anything. Because land of the free, home of the brave, you know. As they say, you can do whatever you want, you know. God forbid we tell somebody to obey God. They're being proud. We're not proud. We're not proud saying we can do whatever we want. We're free in Jesus. We have the grace of the Lord. We're the, the like... They said in old, we're the children of Israel, the overcomers. We've overcome the world through Jesus. We can do whatever we want. See, this is why Israel got the judgment, guys. They were saying we got the sacrifice of lambs. The same way we say we got the sacrifice of Christ today. Therefore, we can go after other gods. And so God took that temple and he threw it down. And, and, and he uh, destroyed their cities. And they went into 70 years of captivity because of their pride of heart. God said, you want to be proud? I'll send you the king of pride. You know, Babylon, the king of confusion, you know. Because you're speaking, you can serve two masters. And and guys, there's so much rebellion in the church. They want grace, but they don't want to humble themselves like a lamb to receive it. There's entitlements. 
Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. I'm entitled to grace. How dare you try to take away my grace what Jesus died? Who can lay a charge against God's elect? Who can lay a charge against us? These guilty charges, you know, are not proved. And they're so, ang they, they are so entitled. And, you know, Lucifer, he was in heaven, guys. He was so proud. He thought because he was in heaven, never going to lose his salvation. Nothing he could do. So he thought, you know, God's a softy. I can sit on the throne. I can be God also. He's not going to do anything to me. He, he He's nice. He, he's so gracious. Look how kind he is. And he tried that with God. And yeah, did he get grace? Yeah, he got grace all right. He got kicked out. He got kicked out, guys. And people want grace. And my name means God is gracious. You know, I... And the Lord name, gave me his name tag so he could be a vessel speaking through me. And God is saying, I want to give grace to you, but you act like little brats in my house. How can I do that? How can I give that kind of grace to you when you act spoiled rotten? A parent spoils her child. Guys, I have a sibling, a sister, you know, I hate to say it, but she, she got spoiled. She got a bunch of stuff handed to her and she became spoiled rotten. She wasn't disciplined because my mother wanted a girl you know and so uh you know and so you know because she's a girl we got to be nice to her and everything and all and uh, you know and she got spoiled guys and 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 this is why the lord you know this is why the church is the way it is and this is why the lord is sending his judgment because he want he wanted to soften the heart but they they're hard-hearted so he's got to break their hearts guys i was hearing a testimony of uh it might have been Timothy Dixon. I can't. Well, no, it wasn't him. It was somebody else. Uh, they were uh, had a near death experience, and Jesus showed them basically soon how there's going to be. He called them like like a uh, some kind of virus, and they called it Hogan Pox or something. That might have just been a clever name the angels gave them. But they told them it was going to be on the earth, and seventy percent seventy percent of the people would get that, and it would be like. Uh, pox or some kind of sores all over their body all over their tongue and and you know they would say it would cause they had brain damage associated with it and dementia and they said their lives would never be normal again i think that just might be that the thing of the outer darkness guys when they go into that in revelation 9 because they're stung all over their bodies you know they're stung all over their bodies, basically. And he was equating it to a big sin virus. But they're stung all over their bodies by those locusts. That's kind of like, in a way, being injected. Uh, but they were stung all over their bodies. And they were, uh, you know, and had that... It looked... It would look like somebody to a disease if you saw it and and brain damage because you're having all the... You're in the darkness for three days straight. And all your mind's coming up, the sins you did to get yourself there. You're being convicted by the Lord. And you're seeing what hell really is, and that's going to hurt your he head. You're going to be so scared and terrified. And that would cause partially dementia, and you wouldn't be the same ever again after those three days of darkness. Unless this is why the healing is coming forth, uh, or... I should say when God's doing this, he said he would send Elijah and Elijah is supposed to restore all things. And he told me I was this person. Look, I want to restore people's lives, says the Lord through this vessel. I have a certain call on his life. I want to do through you. And I want to do through many of my my prophets and my servants uh, to help heal people. But y you guys who are speaking this way are proud. You're egotistical. You feel entitled. You don't have to do anything to earn this. So, God forbid anybody try to take away the sacrifice of the lamb in your own minds by speaking obedience. This is therefore why I'm going to send this judgment. And 70% of you will be in outer darkness because you refuse to accept me. You've said you accepted me, but you have not accepted me with your whole heart. How can you say you believe in me who am the word who deny my word that says... Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. That says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And you rebel and you say, impossible. And you say, no, do not preach, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I told my disciples to go 
doing all the things I commanded them. You said no, do most of them. Don't talk about that be perfect non nonsense. You are re rebels in my house. Guys, I love you, but most of this church, these churches are going to go into the outer darkness, guys. Because they won't submit to the Lord. They're proud in their own way. You know, they're, they're proud. They're just too proud. They believe they're entitled to the grace. Therefore, they don't have to... They don't have to give up that sin. If they go back every now and then, every once in a week to masturbate or something, no problem. Because they got Jesus. They got the sacrifice, you know. This is trampling the blood of Christ underfoot, guys. And, and the angels of the Lord, and the Lord made that very clear that he hated that. You know, he made that very clear about that. And, and people who preach against Catholicism, which is a, a false religion also, he mentioned, they mentioned uh, Catholicism means universalism. Everybody that's going and serving two masters is dipping his hand into the Catholic Church, the universal church. Church means body, the universal body. Even the whole world, guys, is the Catholic Church because it's a universal body that has the agreement that this government of Satan is giving you the sin the, the pornography, the alcohol, the drugs and each of you, every time you say you know, we're under grace, we don't have to do this it's because you have an idol in your heart you have a certain deal with them you can go back to the devil's government and dip your hand into that sin you're going to the Catholic Church you're going to the universal body of the devil to get that sin and I saw like a woman who was supposed to be representing my wife in the dream and her name meaning Christina uh, his anointed follower and I representing Jesus and the dream God is gracious is my name <coughs> and she came back and she was all arrogant because of that wine and stuff she got in other words I've tasted better wine than what's in your house and it represented unfaithfulness and adultery and I've tasted better wine you know I don't and started laughing and mocking and he said that's how they're doing and they say you don't have anything to prove to me you don't have anything to prove you know uh, or I don't have anything to prove to you. You know, I, I don't have anything to prove. You know, if a guy, husband was not wanting his wife to cheat on him. And she says, I don't have anything to prove to you. You love me. You know, you know, and, and I saw her laughing because she had that wine. And, and, and they're proud because they're going out having that wine. And that's making them think they can have two worlds. And that's what makes them rebellion. When you go off into that sin, guys, you harden your heart. If you don't have a good repentance, Satan will put rebellion in your heart. So when you come back and, and somebody the next day tells you you can't serve two masters, you're going to go off on all them. Oh, I'm under grace. Jesus forgave my sin. But you have a lifestyle of going back and forth. You don't sin sometimes, as Jesus told one person. He said, you live in sin. This is your heart. You have a rebellious heart. Rebellion, you think you're entitled to do whatever because you can always have that grace to come back. Even, guys, this is the greatest self-deception that even people in the holiness churches are deceiving themselves. They're telling themselves they're against that doctrine of, uh, you know, once saved, always saved and all this. But they are no different, guys. They are no different in the, their own attitude of their heart that they can go back and forth sometimes in the name of grace they're the same way as god is saying because they believe once saved always saved basically they believe no matter what i do i have that grace to come back jesus will all work it out jesus is surely not going to come back on a day when i go back to that but what does jesus say what does yeshua say he says of you know my servants do good you know that faithful servant he's waiting for me he's watching for me all that you know i will uh you know, good for would it be for that servant when I return, you know, to find him doing what I've commanded him. But if that evil servant saying my heart is my master's delaying is coming, he begins to beat the servants of God like they're beating us up, saying, saying you're trying to uh, do works. You know, you're trying to be God. If they start to beat up the servants, the other servants, and they start to drink. Uh, we just talked about the wine, drink with the drunkard. You know, go out into the world and they're even drinking the, the juice, the uh, 
the, uh, of the spirits of the devil when they're doing these sins. Eat and drink and be merry. Do all these abominations. If they begin to do that, he said. He didn't say if they do that sometimes. He said if they begin to do that. That Lord of that servant will come on a day they don't expect and cut them asunder. Because they're playing with the grace of God. They're saying he's surely going to give me a chance to come back. This is what I hear in the holiness churches. They say if you're trying to bear fruit and you're trying to do this, then... I believe what he's started, he will finish until the end. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And, and they take those scriptures which are true and they twist them. Therefore, surely, in other words, the insinuation is he's going to come back on a day I'm not doing those things if I'm trying most of the time. But what are they doing? They're willfully pulling down their pants and masturbating. And when you're telling people not to do that, that... If they keep doing that, that Jesus is going to come back on a day they don't expect, as he said, if they begin to do that and cut them asunder. And they say, you're trying to be God, which is beating up the servants. That's the first thing he said. Don't beat up the servants. Don't beat up the servants. What does he mean with the, their fist? No, this is a general sense. They, they beat them up with their slander, guys. You're trying to be God. You're proud. You're this. You're that. It's all slander, guys, because they don't want to obey the Lord. Because they are like Cain. Their brother's works were righteous and theirs were evil. So they were jealous. You know, and Jesus told me they were jealous. And I couldn't believe it when they would say that. Because I would never say to anybody, you're jealous of me. Because I never thought I had anything that was so great. But Jesus, when I was sleeping, would tell me jealous. And I was like, really? How can they be jealous, you know? They're jealous. And, and, and he reminded me of the story of Abel and Cain. And other stuff and I was like oh that's that's weird but I still don't see why they'd be jealous of me I mean I don't look like somebody great I'm just uh, you know fear the Lord I, I f fear his you know like a, a lamb guys it's meek it's meek a preaching of hell something it's gonna humble itself they raise their head up high I'm of the Lord you know he's forgiven me they're not meek like a lamb they're like a wild goat in the house of God. Running wild, they can do whatever they want. They can run over here, receive a little bit of the grace of the Lord just so they can be forgiven and run back over here to the sin just so they can have... And they say don't do works, guys. That that uh, salvation is, is from for grace, not a... Uh, you know, it's a gift of God, not of yourselves, you know. You can't do works to get to heaven. That's what they say true you can't do work uh any any work of the world it tells jesus told you we're told that jesus uh christ is the sabbath guys we're told that he is the sabbath and basically for the sabbath uh what he did on the cross meaning we can rest and there's supposed to be no work done on the sabbath or you you put to be put to death but jesus rebuked the pharisees when they tried to stop him from healing a person casting out a demon you know, he said this woman, I think it was 18 years, has been bound up by Satan. Should she not be loosed on the Sabbath day? Should a person not go free from their lust, their porn, their masturbation on the Sabbath day? Basically, uh, it is lawful to do a good deed on, on the Sabbath. And guys, the people who say don't do works or you be cursed because you're trying to work your way into heaven, they're doing the same thing. They, But Why? Because when they go off, they don't really believe Jesus did everything to give them heaven. They're going off to pornography to get another heaven. They're doing works, loading up, spending all that time sweating and doing all that stuff. Loading up that those, those pornography thing, doing works to try to get heaven when Jesus did it for free. They're called to stop working, which is to stop sin and rest. And when there is work, the Lord will work through them. He will do a good work on the day of the Sabbath, like releasing a demon-possessed person. Doing it because they need to be saved. Doing what he does for the sake of others. When you love, guys, you do it for the sake of others. You know. And if they want to even call not pulling down their pants and masturbating works. Or getting the word in you so you don't do that. Fine. Jesus said a good work on the Sabbath is lawful doing because you're doing something for somebody else. Saving one from this, you know. 
and and they're trying to make this you know say you can't do works to get to heaven but what are they doing they're doing works they're trying to get another heaven if they really believe jesus did everything on the cross so they could get heaven not to do work they wouldn't be going out running off in those sins spending hours trying to uh, make heaven for themselves when jesus gave it to them for free so this is the hypocrisy guys this is a rebellion and god's not gonna i'm not gonna be outsmarted by my word says the lord you can't cheat me i see everything man does in secret i keep a record of this you repent you truly turn from that i will erase it but if you keep justifying it before me there's going to come a time on that day that i'm going to say the only way to change you to keep you from destroying other people causing them to continue to sin which could jeopardize their futures at rapture the only way to do that is to uh, put you in that outer darkness. Catch you on a day when you're not expecting. When your name's out of the book of life. Close that book for those three days. Put you in that outer darkness. And let you get a real taste of what it's like to serve two masters. Because you were leading multitudes astray when you're teaching this. You're causing them to think it doesn't matter if, if they sometimes do this. So if they sometimes sin at the rapture, they're going to get caught. They're going to be left behind. I cannot allow you to continue teaching that. You're going to jeopardize lives. Therefore, if you don't repent, says the Lord, you will be in that outer darkness for teaching that, sir. And, and, and man, and whoever is doing that, guys. But I love you, guys. I'm praying for you. But don't, don't follow this crap they're trying to sell you in these churches. I, I love people, guys. But I absolutely hate the rebellion of heart, says the Lord. I hate it because it's leading. It's like people trying to tell me, says the Lord, not to save that gray cat who doesn't know its right hand from the left. Gray is in between darkness and light. Black and white, they say there's a gray. Gray is really evil, meaning I can do this sin and it's okay. Uh, saving that gray cat from that white car of deception coming to kill it. They were telling... They are forbidding me to do this, says the Lord, through my servants. They are forbidding me. And they are accusing my servants, saying they are trying to be God. If you don't repent, you will be in outer darkness, says the Lord, for three days. So clean up your act. 